Good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Welcome back. We made it through another week. This is a pretty quick one. It was a pretty fun week so far. A lot of interesting action. Uh, so many different sort of uh, ways in which the market has reacted. Not, be, not been preemptive uh, from FOMC. And doing very cookie cutter sort of let's say, moves around responses to what we've seen. So let's start it with going into this week, right? Going into this week before FOMC, we had continued with the, the reinflation trade in most respects, right? We were taking most of, uh, quite a bit of the percent off to go into growth because we want to take advantage of the breakout. But most respects, we were looking at a reinflation trade because why the economy was very hot we saw inflation right and the idea was was that the fed was telling us that inflation is transitory and we're going to keep doing what we're doing uh for a longer time now we had an expectation here that what we were going to hear is that okay the economy we know is doing great we know things are inflating but we expected interest rates to come back sooner and that at least they'd stop uh, they'd start tapering sooner as well, right? And what we got was basically the Fed saying that. Now, we did not get a reaction going uh, basically in that day. We got a bit of a whipsaw, but nothing really, right? And then what we saw yesterday was sort of the start to, okay, the reinflation trade we've been on has done very well for us. But now the Fed is going to be cutting interest rates back sooner than later. So now it's changing the script, which if you think about it, right, when we talk about low interest rates in $120 billion a month, that's fueling us right now very quickly, right? And so if they're going to stop that, what's going to happen? Things are going to grow a little bit slower. Why, does the Fed, why is the Fed talking about trying to slow down inflation? And what does that do? It's going to slow us down in terms of growing, right? And so that's what this reaction we're seeing is. We're seeing a reaction to value because value is what it doesn't, again, value stocks do not grow. They stay the same. And that's sort of what makes them what they are. But what we've been doing is pumping them up with liquidity, right? We're pumping them with 120 billion a month and we have inflation that's been pumping them up which is why we saw things like commodities rising so much, right? And so instead, what happened here is we're having take profit on those ideas because the Fed is going to be keeping them down, keeping them in check. Because again, inflation, we don't want it to run wild. And so we don't want things to grow too fast. Specifically, we don't want value companies to grow too fast. So the response was to take profit on those positions in, in, in some respects, right? We're not talking about the whole thing. We're talking about just... Uh, you know, the icing on the cake, really, when we think about it. And what are you going to do with that money? Well, you're not going to put it into bonds. You're not going to put it into other commodities right now because those are already part of the reinflation idea. And so you're going to put it into growth, which is the other part of equities that it makes the most sense because it's breaking out. And guess what? Tech companies don't give a shit about any of that stuff, do they? That's their whole, that's their angle, right? The value angle is that they get to benefit from what's going on in terms of the 120 billion interest rates being low uh, besides banks in a way but again banks have uh, a timeline we'll we'll get into and we've talked about plenty uh, it's not so much that what we heard was bad for banks uh, again this is where correlation comes in and why it's so dangerous to go well banks and inflation are correlated and then well all of a sudden banks are down right now why because it's something that we trade we're not going to make money on banks right this moment anymore. We've been making money on banks. Now we want to put that money in growth and tech. Tech and banks are a lot different. And so we're going to take profit on banks to put it into growth. That makes your whole idea of correlation kind of go away, doesn't it? And so again, we want to be careful about that. We understand why uh, the flows are the way they are. And so everything's in growth. We see everything down really this morning from sort of uh, the growth angle. We can look at it as take profit from yesterday's just Again, yesterday was a disgusting day for, for tech, uh, back into all-time highs. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ here, you know, almost a percent and a half. 
this looks very good for an open and it's just again it's moving with the average s p uh heading towards uh this one percent area uh this should be really interesting we're gonna see what goes on in the morning we'll look at some of the different sectors that are affecting it uh but coming into the day uh we do see a continuation of what we saw yesterday uh in most respects and then the new angle uh chris mentioned it in chat europe selling Again, Europe is tied to value. When we think of Asia, they're tied to tech. We saw Hang Seng and most of China up yesterday. Now we're gonna talk about Chinese tickers and why they're probably a very good play going over the weekend. We of course uh, have tried to do this many times, but now that we think of the reinflation trade turning into this growth trade again, right? then this comes back on, which makes a lot more sense when you think about it in a larger portfolio sort of sense of which one do you want to get? Well, think about this. Uh, have you seen this? We've talked about Europe and trading through all time highs for a while, right? This is the stock 600, which is basically the, I think the best thing that we can look at the most sort of uh, reliable, close to S and P 500 sort of thing for Europe. This is what Europe's been doing, right? This is reinflation. This is the value trading. That's your first take profit day really coming in. And so we're going to keep this in mind of this here rotating towards China because uh, again, not to put, you know, flack on Europe, but they're just not that active uh, on the equity side and at least not anywhere close to the US's equity market, right? And so most money here is still somehow tied to our market. And so putting it into a worldwide perspective, anything coming out of here is probably gonna go to China. Uh, and it, again, any, everything is already coming to our, our growth market, right? That's already sort of a given from what we've seen. Uh, and so I would say some of this is now gonna start to go towards China. Uh, with the, again, reinflation trade now turning into a growth trade, which, again, uh, this sort of shows how naive the market really is in a lot of ways. Uh, the ability to change on a moment's notice. We don't hedge going into events. We never hedged. We never hedged going into FOMC, and we never, uh, it's not that we don't expect things. We were already going into growth. Think about, we were not surprised by the Fed, we're more surprised by the market, right? And that's because we don't really know what to do in, in, until we see it, right? We're not gonna do something because you never know. And so it's better to wait and see. And so now we see this rotation happening, right? Uh, think about it, we we just did this rotation. Uh, I mean, it's been a while, it's been a while. I've talked about how S&P hasn't lost more than 5% uh, for seven months, and it's really from that, from that moment that we started really getting into reinflation trade. Uh, and so now we're sort of coming back to the time before that without the negativity of COVID uh, and the unknown really being there, which means that uh, this, this area is gonna be very interesting because now we need to start to think about portfolios, which I've been saying for these last couple of weeks that we need to be thinking about our portfolios, those percentages. Our risk management side is more important. Uh, and I think Spoon made a nice comment uh, last night is that you can't just throw money at things uh, and expect it to go up anymore. In almost all sort of, let's, okay, let's put it like this. If you put it into the S&P or the NASDAQ, you could just throw it at it and you'd be fine. You could just throw your money at the S&P because it keeps going through all-time highs. Throw it at the NASDAQ, goes to all-time highs, and you would be fine. s and is never going to go down 40% during the day, is it? But again, that's not really how we trade or anyone really trades. So you throw money at things. It, you cannot do that right now. We've seen it, right? We saw it with tech. You couldn't just keep throwing money at tech because you would have been really, really punished, right? Now we're seeing you just can't keep throwing your money uh, at basically anything. You have to be active. And I think that word is the most important thing in the market right now is activity because you can't be passive. You, in, in the passive sort of term, if you're passive right now, you're trading on an average, which you've been doing well. But if you compare the difference between just putting your money in the S&P, right, to actively trading value 
when it had when it was really rallying through here, which it still is trending, right? So we want to make sure we're not being too too reactionary to one day. We're not going to. But then we go and take the breakout on growth. If you look at these sort of things and then the way in which we're buying pullbacks here, it's significantly more than just trading the average, right? Listen, the S&P is up uh, a ton, right? From the COVID low, you throw it over here. That's a pretty big number if you can see that. That's a pretty big number if you can see that. That's getting close to the triple, the triple digit number, right? Since the COVID low. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But we still know that those funds, those traders out there, retail traders like us, any institutions, anybody that's been active has been doing better. And if you think back to what I was just talking about about a month ago or so, we're talking about these funds that are active. I want to get on board with some of those asset managers that are uh, active and not being passive because they're making a ton of money. And they have, a, again, they have large funds. We're talking about billions of dollars and they're able to do it with that. Again, being active is important and being able to change your mind is important. I think the lessons we've learned have paid for themselves even when we've lost money because what we've been able to do over, I would say really these, these last seven months since the election has been able to change our mind. Uh, and when we have a bias, we're questioning it all the time. Uh, there's There's been times when we didn't think that growth was going to be able to really come back this soon. And we were able to change our mind and get a part of it. We only wanted to trade mega caps. But as we traded those mega caps, we started to realize, you know what? Some of these other tech companies that are smaller, we can start to get a part of and be aggressive. We were only, I said, listen, guys, we're only trading three-month options and we're going to be trading long. We have to be careful. We're, things are going to be slow, right? And we were able to change from that into being short term again and being active, taking riskier positions. Now, you don't have to trade things through weekly options or anything crazy like that. That's absolutely fine. But understanding that it's on the table, right, is a big thing. And so all of a sudden you take this angle, which my my account used to be just, again, when I have a watch list of options, used to be just sort of longer dated at the money, careful options. And now my watch list is full. Uh, it's basically increased in size by, you know, probably a square. And now it's full of some risky things that are all out there that I'm just ready for. I'm going to be aware of. And we're looking at everything. Think of how the bio move came back on, right? We weren't, we weren't trading bios since 2020, really, in that summer, uh, in that like sort of up to September range. And then all of a sudden, here we are again. Uh, really getting a part of some volatility that the market says doesn't exist, right? And so, again, being able to change your mind and do new things is a necessity if you want to be profitable. And I would say the risk part is probably the hardest thing is, is you go from sort of low risk sort of situations into higher risk and understanding that you're going to have to take more risks to be able to take what's on the table, which means you're going to have to be a part of more things. Uh, you can't just throw all your money at one at one idea and then have it not work and go, well, I guess I'm just unlucky, right? That was just not the one. I, again, we've all had this where we, we bought the wrong stock, right? If I just bought the other one, we would have made money. That's where this, again, think about what this market is here now. This is about reach and being able to spread across the most. It's not easy. And again, that's sort of where I have my my best time of trading is when I can sort of cast a wide net and capture more. That's, that's not easy. And again, not everything's going to go up. When we talk about probabilities, you know, we're not talking about that high of a probability that the trade's really going to really take off. And so I think for going into this weekend, we need to keep this in mind that there's a couple different ideas we're going to have. I think, again, I think the China trade. So when we think about things like PDD, that we were trying to be a part of before, right? We've been talking about for the last couple of days because I was looking at the ticker and I'm like, what are we, I can't believe we're doing this again. I talked about wanting to get a part of it, right? This is something that we can get a part of. What about Baba? This hasn't really moved too much yet. I want this on the weekend. So this is a trade. Now, what if this doesn't pay off by Monday, right? And we kind of go back to a norm. I'm not going to say that this wasn't 
wasn't a good trade, right? It's important to realize that, okay, I'm going to make a lot of trades like this probably today going over the weekend because mentalities are shifting. And I want to take what we saw as some sort of rotation and that more people will start to think about it and change their mind. But we need to remember we can change a lot quicker, right? We saw the first day of some some moves. I do think you're going to get further buying, uh, continue rallying through through with the mega caps. And so what we want to do is continue to get ahead of other portfolios that are going to do so that are a little slower, right? And so things, again, like the China trade, possibly getting back into COVID winners, right? We've talked about COVID winners and some of those charts. We talked about like Etsy, uh, how bad this chart looks, right? Things like this that haven't moved, we're going to be aware of, right? Uh, again, those trades like uh, those charts like Netflix that we know are good that are just at a low, we should be looking for these for swings, right? Those name recognition uh, charts that are just out of low. Now, I talked about home builders uh, going into FOMC. I put the LEN chart, which is again, one of the individual tickers in the home building uh, sector that's we've traded a lot in the past. The home building idea, albeit value, is, is not so much reinflation trade. It's very related to real estate right now. Uh, we did see a nice move yesterday. And so again, instead of getting the move on FOMC, we got it after FOMC, which again, uh, how silly are we to think that people would be buying things preemptively before? Who knows? Uh, you would expect to get a reaction the moment it happens, but here we are. Uh, we got it We got it the day later, right? It, that happens. And so I think I like the move overall uh, when we look at uh, sort of, the tickers in the bid we saw yesterday. So we're gonna go home builders through the weekend. I still have this DHI position because it didn't get stopped out. Uh, so this didn't really move yesterday, obviously. It's just sort of sitting there. And so we're gonna go with the home builders into the weekend. I think when you when you think a little bit about this, the difference between this chart and how we look at uh, something like uh, banks or energy right now, those moves are completely opposite where one has been trending up for fucking ever here with banks and energy. And then the other has been trending down for a long time since sort of the January. That's more growth sort of angled and, and sort of uh, speculative. And it's not so much tied to a commodity or tied to an idea as it is to just normal everyday people, which we've talked about. People are more uh, sort of inclined to be a part of something that they they see as a real thing to them personal not so much like gold is a rock and so that's physical something that's actually personal so uh, again we have seen that with retail uh let's let's jump over here to banks and energy uh just to to wrap up sort of everything uh, again growth growth is great everything growth fucking we love it buy it uh i'm glad we're a part of it we made some really interesting moves okay banks energy still the two sectors that are up the most this year are we gonna throw them out because energy is still over seventy dollars per barrel, or excuse me, crude is still over seventy dollars per barrel? This candle is not exactly in line with what we're seeing. Not exactly in line with what we're seeing, is it? Again, where's my correlation? Thought these things were correlated, right? Because again, things are not being. Let's let's remember in the equity market. You have to have money to buy something. If you have no cash, you need to take profit on something else. Do you want to continue to push your position that is up the most this year? Energy is still up the most this year, over 55% this year. This is not even close. No sector is close. These two things are not connected. Crude and energy trade together one to one. We've seen it forever. So then why is it? that this futures chart of crude has been booming. We've seen the price of crude go up over, uh, you know, it was $60 a barrel. Now it's over $70 a barrel. And we've seen the energy market really rip with that, right? Nonstop. So why is it that this candle looks like this yesterday? Because again, there's take profit here on the equity side to make room for their growth trades, right? If this is completely predominant and based on what we see on that other side of things, right? If the prices of energy themselves, again, this is a this right here, this is an average of the valuation of equity companies, right? 
And then where does the value of those equity comes, uh, companies come from? It comes from their revenues. Well, if the price of the barrel is up a lot, then the value of the company is up, which we know from the idea of the other inflation trades. So what we have here is, again, you cannot use correlation. This is where correlation fucks you. This is a candle in which is completely predominant and based on flows, where there's an outflow here to go to an inflow in tech, which we saw an exact, an exact move of, right? And so again, it's very important that we do not all of a sudden make uh, very rash sort of decisions and, and base our opinions off of a candle that is not exactly what it seems. It is exactly just a flow, right? Now, same thing with banks, but a little bit different is that we know banks have been doing extremely well because of this reinflation trade and the economy opening up. And because we've been betting on for a long time that what was going to happen, we were going to get interest rates back sooner than later, which is good for banks. So why is it that banks, if, if banks want interest rates to come back sooner than later, right? In, in an average sense, in an average sense, because they can make more money with it, even though, again, there is an angle that we need to talk about is that they've been doing very well under the circumstances because they've been trading very heavily. So because the equity market keeps going up, they've been going up. But I'll just put it in a historical sense. They like higher interest rates because they can make loans easier. So why is it that they took profit after they go good news? Hmm. Maybe because that's not where this correlation is coming from. This is not some sort of correlation to that idea. What it is, is again, an outflow to go into what? To growth, because you can make more money on growth right now. So again, what do traders, what do funds do? They want to make money right now. There's an opportunity cost, and they'd rather take some profit from this to go put it into growth, because growth has not been on the same move, right? Those charts like Amazon, when you look at it, it's striking right? It's very striking. It's done nothing. It's traded flat for over half a year. And then all of a sudden, we start to be able to put a move on. Don't you want to be a part of that? Yeah, that's why we're a part of it, right? And so, uh, again, when we look at those candles, it's very important we do not change everything we know about them, right? That's, that's not what's happening. We need to be aware that there is a rotation now happening into growth instead. How much we don't know. And so you don't get to make a decision to go, okay, you know what? We're going to take this entire value idea and throw it away. And we're going to go put everything in growth now because that's how you start to get caught, right? We still need to be, I don't like the big D word. And I don't mean that D word. I mean the diversification word. It's not that we need to be diversified or anything like that. No one is truly diversified. We're in the fucking equity market. We're trading risky options. It, it would be silly to act like well, all of a sudden we're, we're being better traders by having some value position, some growth positions. It's not so much that. That's not, that's not important. But it is important that we don't all of a sudden throw out what's been doing the best. This is just starting to come up, right? We're just seeing, we're just seeing this come back up. Yes, NASDAQ's at all-time high. But this is just starting again. Energy is up the, it's the sector that's up the most, and it's double the next, which is banks, right? We're not going to all of a sudden go, oh, that's no longer good. There's a reason why we priced it this high. We're getting a reaction this week. Right now, we're making decisions week to week, not day to day, right? We're very understanding of that. And we're going to continue to have these two different strategies inside, try to use both of them to maximize what's going on, right? And so that's taking riskier trades on this sort of growth side, understanding that these are not trades that we're going to go sit on for three months. These are trades that we want to get right now. We want exposure to the move this moment, which is why we've done so well with this move that's happened because again we changed the tone right we didn't stick with the same and i think that's why we've seen you know maybe you've heard opinions from people that thought you know some of you've actually said this that some people's opinion was that the market had a tough week and it depends on your position it's 100 percent depends on your portfolio and what you've been trading to me this week's been one of my favorite weeks we've had We've had some trades this week that really would make some people feel sick. There, there's some things that would make people feel sick. If I told my mother about some trades this week, she'd probably be like, why aren't you buying me another car? You know, why don't you buy us a house? Why don't you do something? 
And if you ask someone else, they probably lost their house. They probably lost their house from some dumbass trades this week because it's, it is like that. We all have different sort of opinions and it's our ability to make decisions uh, and problem solve. Uh, and again, that word, that important word, active, right? To be active, you need to solve problems. Every single day, I solve a new problem. Uh, and so from our angle here, uh, and just like I said from FOMC, when some of you were a little bit worried about what happened during that FOMC day, and, and then we had a great day the next day and you feel a little bit more comfortable, it's important not to let that completely just shift your focus and go, okay, now everything's going to be great forever. I do see market continue to trade through all-time highs, specifically through a, the growth angle. So NASDAQ all-time high continuing. That's, that's not, it's very hard to stop it, right? We're now aware of a rotation that's going on. We're going to keep our mind, you know, keep our eyes open, understand it, uh, digest it before we start to uh, be rash, right? We want to make sure we understand what's going on. Things like the S&P here, we, we need to get a wrap on exactly how this average is working. I don't think uh, anyone here is that good of an, uh, an idea of how this average is working right now. S&P is very tech heavy, but we're getting very negatively hit here on a lot of things. Again, banks, energy. So right now, we really need to understand what this is. Is this a trade we go put on over the weekend? Instead of a long-term trade, do we put a short-term trade on? Take advantage and think this is going to get bid. Crude, is, crude hasn't budged. Crude has not budged, and this is one-to-one -one with crude. This should be up. Do we take this trade going into the weekend? I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but I would love to be able to go get a almost 6% discount from the high right here right now. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Same with banks. If there's anything we know, it's that this right here is probably a mistake and that something's not being priced here. And guess what? Banks are going to buy back the hell out of it. We have $400 billion worth of buybacks on schedule right now, which is a lot of fucking money. And that's again, why we've been buying growth companies, been talking about it for a long time. We knew that the big mega caps were buying back stock and it's been driving their price up. Banks are the other side of the story. Uh, and to think that they're not going to be buying back is, is pretty silly. We have a lot that's, you, we have a lot of potential. The other thing to mention is we've seen a lot of moves this week, uh, put a shit ton of points on because of the option angle, right? The gamma moves that are happening. Be aware that we have a ton of options expiring this just today, right? Basically, well, tomorrow, but they expire today, the last day of trading this week. There's a ton of calls out there, ton of puts, everything. A lot can happen in terms of volatility when you have a lot of options expiring. That's what we want. We want that volatility because the market needs to wake up, understand volatility is good for the upside, the downside, for everyone to be able to make plays, right? So uh, we could definitely have a volatile day, and I think everyone's going to be putting a lot of bets on. Uh, and I think we have the right angle, so we continue with what we've been doing. Uh, and being aggressive, right? So uh, we got a lot of ideas, a lot of things to watch for. Uh, retail's doing well this morning. It looks they're continuing with the pamp. And we'll see what we get. We'll see what we get. Uh, watching the S&P average here, uh, this is very different compared to what we, we understand on the NASDAQ here. You can already see volatility difference, bid difference. Uh, and so again, the growth angle is certainly our angle right now. Taking advantage of what we have. The mega caps, again, should continue to be traded differently than the rest of uh, growth, understanding that we want to push those winnings. I'm never going to criticize anyone for taking profit on those. They're, they're up a, a, I mean, they're up a ton. So uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with those. If you see that you're losing a little bit, depend, again, it depends on your options. I have no idea what you got for options, but you got something that seems a little bit maybe too risky to push over and you've been, you're sitting on some profit. Nothing wrong with taking that and getting ready for another, uh, uh, another you know, again, weekend <laughs> sort of uh, fiesta that you can have. You take profit on big positions, puts you, uh, puts you in a position to put some risk on, I guess. Let's see. Um, let's see, let's see. So again, anything in tied to uh, growth, we're all a part of. X trade obviously through the weekend. We sort of have already mentioned that from a couple days ago. I think who mentioned it? I think Wiz isn't in here, but I think you mentioned Wiz and uh, excuse me, uh, travel and travel and X. Uh, yes, we like those into the weekend. We mentioned those, so glad he mentioned those as well. 
Travel, again, not being tied to reinflation. That's a completely different thing. This is short-term volatility. Guess what we're getting today? Volatility. So there you go. Good job. Um, yeah, so we're already part of these ideas. Uh, what was different about uh, the travel angle and everything else, uh, yesterday, of course, had a, a day that it pulled at a support. Uh, the difference was, uh, again, that this is still behind. It needs to catch back up. We have points to recapture back to February 2020. That's pretty, uh, pretty interesting to think, but it's the truth that we are quite a ways away. Now, casinos are a little different, but that's all right. Travel in general is very good going into the weekend, I would say. Let's see. Let's take a look through mega caps. Nice candle from Apple there. Again, we have moves from yesterday that are being taken profit. I mean, when you get, again, Amazon put 2% on yesterday. And it's break even to start the day. Microsoft, these are big candles, right? These are big candles. Tesla even had a good day yesterday, which talked about uh, I wasn't going to buy on the low and I didn't. And I'm still not probably going to buy it over the weekend. But even these are looking decent enough comparatively, right? So keeping that in mind. Uh, in terms of S&P here, uh, I'm just going to throw out the the idea that when we talk about, you have two convergent trend lines here, right? Let me turn this back to resistance, okay? And, I mean, let's just put it into perspective. You're probably going to burst through this here, whether it's a gap up on Monday, right? This is one candle away. That's Monday. You get two convergent, you get a trend line, which is a strong trend line, and you get a resistance here, which is pretty local, right? which is basically support, which we kind of just threw in there. That's basically an average. That's pretty close to where we are today. We're going to want to gravitate up there. We'll see which way volatility brings us today on an average, whether uh, this pulls up. But if you think about the percent, that's it's, not, it's just half a percent, it's half a percent to there. So if you climb back in, you're going to get some, some bid. NASDAQ is at all time high. So again, some of these things, the averages look a little strange. It's important again, that we're trading individual tickers like we always have been. That's how we make money, right? And so we're gonna continue to trade what's making points on. We have plenty of things putting points on again here today. We're doing great on Adobe still, Docu still doing good. Uh, those two been big names that we've been a part of. Um, I'm happy with those charts. Adobe's the long-term chart that we have. Uh, Docu came off of that big momentous day. Uh, just recently, uh, this was a lot of fun. And so this chart here, I love a lot as well. Think again, uh, not being scared when we see a 20% day. Uh, again, obviously during the moment, it was only like 10%, but not being scared of that number uh, to be able to continue buying is important. Um, these charts, these charts are pretty damn good. Job obviously has been mentioned by quite a few of you. Roku continues here. I like our trade here. This is still uh, an area which we do see a lot of speculation and probably again more mergers going on or buyouts some sort of m a going on let's see. put this on the qq goo by minute let's see what happens let's see what unfolds probably 10 o'clock we'll finally get an idea of what exactly is going to go on today uh in terms of other markets bitcoin's down we've seen the dollar up right dollar up from from all the bond selling let's just look at this real quick uh in terms of this again this is probably a striking look, but it's why we've, before this started to happen, we talked about this move here. Remember when this was all risk on equities? Yeah, that's the same idea. But again, do you know what's happening in relation with that? It's this whole bond move, right? It's yields have been going up uh, from their low. Now, 10 year is still under 1.5, so maybe I shouldn't be that, uh, that talkative about it. But you have commodity selling, you have, what do you have? You have rotation. You know what happens when you have a rotation? Things convert to the dollar. When you sell something, it goes to the dollar. What's been happening? It's been being bought into growth, right? What's happening in Europe? Equities are being sold. What was happening in China? Equities were being sold. Now what's going to happen? Probably going to get bought. And so again, when we look at this, we're not looking at this as, uh-oh, dollar's going up. This is due directly to what the Fed has said, which is that interest rates are going to come back sooner and that they're going to start talking about that 120 billion a month and basically tapering it right that will cause the dollar to go up why because the dollar came down because they started doing that stuff <laughs> it's just that simple right why did the dollar of a certain why did this spike 
Well, we had a liquidity crisis, if anyone remembers, and actually started before COVID. Liquidity crisis. And then you know what happened? The Fed cured us of our liquidity problem. And they started throwing money at us. And so you know what happens? When you print a lot of money, the dollar goes down. Do you know what happens when you're going to start tapering that? The dollar goes up. This has no effect on really the valuations. And it's more a direct effect of what we've seen and heard and also the money being rotated, right? If you go back to rotation days, you can find the days in which rotations have happened, right? When there's these big moves. Keep that in mind. Uh, gold, we will see, right? We've talked about the come down here and why we don't want to be buying it from here. Again, commodities tied to reinflation. Now, whether or not this has a correlation to Bitcoin is the question we've had. Does Bitcoin get some bid from here? This is not getting anything, right? Our little buddy in Trading View Ideas told us that this is where you'd want to put your money uh, <laughs> if we got the response that the Fed said. We haven't seen that. We'll see if crypto comes turns back on, but it's just too much money to be made in equity still, right? It's too much. So far, pretty stable. We're not seeing much. Not seeing much. On the sell side, mostly, mostly just oil. Right, mostly just oil. Banks and energy. We're gonna, in terms of a low, we have some supports down there. But again, it's not clear. It's not clear enough right now to go, okay, let's just buy right now. It's okay if it goes a little bit lower. Again, if uh, another thing that should be mentioned, as usual, not as usual, but is always a given. If you buy something and all of a sudden it starts losing money, then you sell it immediately. We do not hold anything. We are, it doesn't make us pussies for selling things immediately. If you buy anything, options, shares, and you're losing money and your position's red, you sell it. We do not hold on to red positions. That's the exact opposite of what we do. We hold on to green ones, even if they go a little red, right? If when you look at your profit, it's green, but your daily, you know, the daily move is bringing it down a little bit. We then ask a question, can we keep pushing this or not? And most times we keep pushing it, even if it's losing a little bit. Because we're, why? We're still in profit. We're still green. But if the position overall is red, we sell it. We don't give it, you know, we don't give it a day. We don't give it two days to watch it. Uh, and then if it goes up like a percent, then all of a sudden we go, oh, yeah, maybe it'll come back up. No, that's wasting time and money. As soon as it's not working, if I buy something right here and then the market starts coming down, then I'm selling it immediately and then I'll find a better time to buy it, right? Always keep that in mind. Never hold on to anything. Uh, that's, that's not how we trade. We push our winnings and cut our losses about winning big, losing small, right? And we lose so small that uh, you can't even see it. You shouldn't be able to see it overall. Uh, now, there's people that will make more money by taking more risk because they hold those positions that go red and then they turn green, which we may be able to not catch, right? Sometimes we miss those positions that they may dip a few percent and then they go to the upside and we may not catch it on the upside because momentum started and we sort of avoid those momentum trades. We, we wanna catch them before, but guess what? I've never blown an account up and that's more important to me. So again, Blowing accounts up are excuses for just being, uh, just, uh, just really being, I would say, I don't want to say stupid, but it's just being too risky and, and not understanding that you don't have to do it like that, right? Uh, you learn real quick that it's better to protect your money than, <laughs> than to risk it all to somehow, I don't know, it goes down 5% and then it goes up 10% and that feels good. I, I mean, why don't you just sell it and then wait to buy it again, right? nothing's gonna stop you from doing that so again cut your losses instantly there is no there's no room for error there no matter what the situation is no matter how much you like it right all right um let's see overall overall so far retail traders really popping off uh being very aggressive still this morning uh, very happy with that amc broke through that trend line that we had i like that uh, so again, around here to stay, looks very good. Looks very good. When we look at things like, let's see, BB coming possibly up here. 
not sure I want to take any meme stocks. We'll we'll let the meme stocks have its day. Well, we're more involved with some of the larger larger moves we're looking at. Neo continues to do very well for us. Uh, and in terms of transitions, we've talked about some transitions again. Uh, I would be careful about transitioning to the weekend here. If you can put a new position on again at open, that'd be great. I mean, it's up two percent now. I think you're okay. But again, we were taking China into the weekend, but um, again, this chart is a little. It's a little weird on the option side because it's been trending, and so the volatility isn't really there. Uh, you should be getting volatility from these last two days, uh, and so that was a good time to get some transitions in if you could, but otherwise, it's okay to push it. Nothing wrong with really just pushing this one. Let's see. LEN, we're up so far from sort of, again, after, again, FOMC sort of made this interesting move. DHI is, is down half percent, so still break even on that position. This market here is very interesting. This is very, it's looking more like a, a closed trade for the, the average, even though uh, LEN is doing okay. Things like X are very volatile down in here. This is very interesting. Great spot for it. Again, it kind of, it's kind of sucks because you're using uh, the angle again of steel and we're talking about commodities have been going down a lot and there's probably going to be less buying because of this sort of rotation, but uh, I'm a, you know, an attic for buying support. So it's okay with me. Not all things need to line up perfectly. Let's see. Healthcare, we continue to do very well on. Watching for things like uh, FinTech. Maybe we can look at some of these charts. Um, PayPal has been very good to us. Square Inc. had been coming up from the low, catching back up. Uh, I do like these going to the weekend. If you're not a part of them, make sure you are. Uh, again, we've we've taken multiple different trades on these. We took the square squaring trade a little bit later, right? We took a little bit later, uh, but these trades are very good. Uh, and so, just to mention them again, I think everyone has already seen me mention these charts, but just to reiterate, uh, I think fintech is another great angle that you're getting the best of both sides, which is again this sort of finance angle but then you're getting the all of the benefits right now of growth and so you're not getting dragged down right and that's why we like those sort of tertiary finance companies that right now they're not getting beat up like banks because guess what they don't have fucking deposits that they have to sit on and and have problems right uh, they're not completely tied into inflation the 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 interest rate sort of dilemma and so we like those we like those uh semiconductors again have been doing very well for us this week we've talked about semiconductors for for a really long time and uh they continue to do well they're uh, a lot of different names again a lot of different names and nvidia for instance being our best uh long term continues to pay us and again, if you haven't been a part of this position then uh you probably haven't been a part of anything uh most <laughs> most uh i would say people would say that this is the best semiconductor i mean it's just getting the it's just it makes more sense on every single angle. And so from a chart angle, it's been our best position in terms of semiconductors. Uh, like, I don't know how many months it's been since we've understood that, that AMD was bearish, right? AMD was bearish uh, forever. And so we were trading NVIDIA through all that TSM, UMC, right? And then we just put a fucking risky position on for AMD, right? That's, those are different things. We can remove the range now since it broke through. Um, now this could now for here's a good example of uh maybe not like uh <laughs> taking something that happens and then getting overly uh sort of changed by it uh okay amd puts five and a half percent on right it was six percent and now we're putting another percent on here semiconductors all going up we should expect amd to go up that was the expectation does that all of a sudden make this the better chart because i put so many points on so quickly no, it doesn't. It does not make this the better chart. So in terms of the, like the longer term position and like really taking advantage of something, this is not the one, right? This is still risk. Uh, these are still very short term risk trades, right? If this turns into a trend, then great. We'll we'll trade in accordingly. But uh, again, Nvidia over AMD, one hundred percent right now. Keep that in mind. Even though this was a lot of fun. There's a lot out there, guys. There's a lot out there. Uh, I'm still formulating a <laughs> the energy and bank plot in my head right now. 
Uh, the now chart has been doing very well for us as well. Uh, we I just updated that on the list. We didn't get a chart for it, but uh, that's called open space up there. A lot of charts look like this right now. Uh, again, we've talked about it plenty. I don't think we need to need to beat a dead horse. We've got most of our tech companies looking like this. Most of them looking like this. Let's see. PDD continuing with a nice start. So PDD, Baba. That's what we want. Uh, JD, Bidu, some of the others. I mean, they're they're all similar. I just think that PDD and... So you get the PDD volatility, and then you get the Baba uh, size. The thing with JD is that it's direct competition to Baba, and so we usually see that played out in price. JD will follow, not lead. Netflix looking decent. Uh, let's see, where is Zoom? Uh, Zoom continues, so this is going well. Uh, the only COVID winner that has a chart that is sharp to the upside. I never, uh, whatever. I never posted bottom wedge or anything in here, but it's not too hard. Let's see, let's see. what do we got? Talked about Chegg uh, coming out of the low here as well. Had the same head and shoulder sort of idea. Uh, again, anything that had that accumulation at a low, been doing well. We're seeing a lot of those continue here today. Uh, Blink continuing here. This might be a nice trade over the weekend for some of you that uh, want to go buy a, a nice COVID winner. Remember this move? Yeah. That's a pretty nice spot there. We've seen it come off the low in a similar way with the, the head and shoulders idea accumulation. Hasn't completely broke out of the, the high here, the neckline. Uh, but it's possible you get it today. Yeah, and I think... Um, with further rotation, you're going to start to get some bid back into some of these names, uh, even more than what they've got so far. Uh, things like ARC are getting further bid here, right? Again, all the charts out of this head and shoulders accumulation. That's right on the trend line. I, I don't so much want to buy the ETF. Again, this is more of a... This is an average of all the tickers that are within there. We have all those tickers in our list, basically, that from this chart. So just to keep that in mind. Thoughts on Z? Yeah, so again, home builders into the weekend um, are there. Z, you could use in the same... Okay, probably a good question, and maybe we should think about Z more. We have not touched Z because it's been shit, right? But with the rotation back into growth, that's why we would buy it. We wouldn't buy it because of the housing thing, because the housing thing has brought it down, <laughs> which was the problem, right? But it does have the benefit of, yes, the housing side, just like we want home builders. Home builders are at a low. And so, yes, I think Z is a good, uh, is a good idea. It's up 3%. That doesn't really matter. I, again, I would not look at 3% here and be like, oh, I can't buy that now. Um, it's showing us some better, some better moves here. Um, how do these things play out? Okay, so Z has the... The angle of housing, which we know should be higher on the equity market, it just is not. And again, I don't think anyone really, we don't really know the timing of why. Housing keeps going up and the equity market on that housing side keeps going down. REITs are going up. REITs are going up. Why, are, why is real estate not going up, right? On the housing side, um, Z has been showing that houses don't even stay on their website for more than a week. 50% of all homes are sold within a week on Zillow. So they're very active. When is earnings? Earnings are in August. Um, that's kind of far out. And these earnings did not help us really, but we got information that they're doing great. Um, this would need to be a decision that's completely based off the chart, not on the opinion of whether housing is going up and everything else. I think the growth angle helps a lot and we're seeing it in the chart here. So we can see that it's rising with the speculation we just saw. What kind of range would you put on this? I think it's a good trade. It's just what do you put for a time on it? Maybe a one month option, July month lease. I don't know. See, a lot of these charts, are, you just, you don't know. You don't really have, you don't really have an answer when you look at it, which is sort of, I think we can find answers elsewhere. Okay, you know what? This is actually a... Okay, if it breaks this, then I'm going to buy it. 
There you go. This resistance right here, what did I just do? Oh. Let me do this. I think it's a good question. It's a good question. And again, we think we, we bring up this question every day and see whether we can buy Z and I say no. Um, if it breaks this, it's about one, it's 116 and a half. If it breaks that, bounces on it, shows us something good. Now it got rejected earlier. It's getting rejected right now. If it breaks that, I'll buy it. I'll break, uh, I'll buy it. And I would go with some like July monthlies, maybe, maybe two monthers. Um, but I'm not too worried about extending it because this is the kind of position that you would transition instantly. You only take this trade if it's going to be up fucking next week, right? And so we could then take profit. That would be 100% uh, easily. It would be easily 100% trade. You take profit on the 100% trade. And as you take profit on it, buy the new longer position if we think this is really going to go up. Uh, and so that's one way to look at it. So nice question. Good, good, um, good point to bring up. It, that one's a little baity though. That's why you can't just go buy that right now and be like, oh yeah, this is going to be fucking great. I can't wait. Uh, that one is definitely some bait because it's not, it, it doesn't have all the pieces that add up, right? The chart doesn't add up. Uh, it doesn't have the accumulation. It doesn't have that head and shoulders like those other charts, which are putting points on, right? They're putting points on doing very well. It doesn't have any of that. It has not moved. hasn't shown bid. The <laughs> home builder, again, a lot of them, we're going to be careful, but we definitely want to pull the trigger if we, we see opportunity. Uh, ZS is on trend line 217 and a half or so. Or is, that, is that two? Oh, okay, it's 220. Never mind. Proportion's a little fucked up. It's on 220. Some of these charts 100% need to be transitioned, I would say. I think we have... We have, I don't know, a few charts that are like that right into a trend line. What is that corporate bond ETF doing? Yikes. Uh, so far, we're completely flat today. So we're not seeing anything. It's about to be 10 o'clock. We'll see if uh, we get some get some changes. In terms of mega caps, basically all break even. Uh, Google and Facebook are down almost a percent. Uh, again, these are just completely different charts. Google is the ticker that's up the most on the year. <laughs> Besides like any stock, uh, any large, large cap to mega cap. This is completely fine move. Had a nice day yesterday, 1%. So same with Facebook. This trading in this area is no problem for these tickers. It's really Microsoft, Apple, and Google that continue to move. Uh, and I would say Microsoft is the best looking. Uh, between, between Apple, Amazon, which were coming from a low, and then Google and Facebook were trading through highs. Microsoft is very related to Google in terms of its move yet it's not really coming down as much. So it's probably, it looks the most stable. I would say this is the least volatile of those five from what we've seen. So we keep that in mind. But we like the volatility right now of these two. These are great trades to continue to push. Tesla, break even as well. Uh, again, we're, we're going to need to see, we're going to need to see a breakout. You could put a bet on over the weekend on this, I think. I think with uh, options expiring, you're, you're probably going to get a nice little bump uh, I don't know what you'd buy though. They're just expensive. Not sure what you would buy. All right, do we have anything on dips? Okay, well hold on. We we need to go figure out this. This is what we're gonna figure out. Do we put the trade on now or do we wait? That's the question. And are we gonna get more rotation Monday? Ah. How much how much are we risking? Let's say we got support at 52 here, which we do. That is about two and a half percent lower. We'd be risking about two and a half percent. But crude is going up. And it's, is crude going to be up Monday? And are we going to whip back? Oh, fuck me. I hate this stuff. Banks are going to make it easy for us. It looks like banks are going to make this really easy for us, which is great. This is honestly, the, who doesn't love to go buy at a low on something that's just going to go up, right? So I'm a big fan of this. 
big fan of buying again getting a discount energy is not going to play the same way because uh, again the volatility there and the tie to crude is completely different so it's important that again we understand the differences between the two even though they've trended up for fucking ages uh, and look the same uh energy is still being traded different consolidation was different These are, you know what, the bank moves, uh, again, we've had to, uh, again, if you think anyone has held through this, you're insane. Um, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. Uh, we want to buy them. We want to buy them, but it's kind of hard to buy on that. This, it's going to be pretty wild. I think it's going to be pretty wild because everyone knows that these are, these are good. And they're also going to be buying back themselves. It'll be really interesting. I have to really think about it this weekend. In terms of S&P, we're also just trading flat. Okay, average is pretty flat to start. We got two minutes to 10. In terms of volatility, think about it a little bit. Let's see. I didn't really mention the bid because it's kind of phony. Why wasn't it yesterday, right? Okay. Why wasn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Volatility a little, a little fucked up. Um, this doesn't help. Okay, stop looking at that. Let's see. Maybe we're gonna use some of the dollar move. I mean, everything's going into growth. We're getting bid from into China. Keep, we're going to keep going with that. And then as we solve these other problems, then we'll think about putting money on it. But we're not going to put money in things that we don't understand yet. That's for sure. Dow's been doing pretty good as well. It obviously came down off the start of the breakout, but coming up with everything that we see from kind of so far. Small caps actually held through that move pretty well, considering that they're all banks and energy. Airbnb continues. Looks like it's going to put a nice day on. All right, so we're we're being patient, being patient. Len is at two and a quarter. Um, what do I specific? Oops. What do I specifically want to see here at ten? Coming through here, I want to start to see more bid from megas. So I want to see this stuff start to rise right now, because if we're not going to get confirmation of that rotation, then we need to start to think about some other things. We should be seeing bid in megas. Because, again, we have rotation from banks and energy. That money needs to land somewhere. If the money doesn't land anywhere, then we got to fucking find it. And it could just be waiting. And if everyone's waiting, then all of a sudden we have no one buying. And that means lower prices, which we can wait then as well. We'll wait to buy at a better lower price, right? So I think right now we'll get a little bit of a pivotal time here during this day. Because we're going to understand whether or not people are going to be waiting. Uh, and we have like opposite opinions right now. We have retail traders just continue to buy shit, but that does not help with basically anything. That just gives meme stocks more bid. Uh, and with all these options, this is like the biggest thing is with all these options here. Where are these options going to close at? which are gonna be in the money, and how many calls are around these areas, right? If you think of Apple here, how many calls are right around here that are close to being in the money, right? Or that are right on the brink that haven't been hedged yet? 
And how many points do these need to put on to go make those market makers go hedge them, right? They have to go buy the underlying for it and then causes a bigger move. If this move comes through today, then I think you're going to see more of it. You're going to see even larger moves come through. Um, but it can be said the other way, right? It can be volatile the other way where if calls are now not in the money, they don't have intrinsic value, then all of a sudden all the underlying is sold by market makers and the stock drops, right? So it could be... It can be one or the other, but we know it's more to the upside, right? We, we know more of its hedge. So what we're looking for, you have to see some continuation of it, or all of a sudden you need to start to see that, okay, this, this, this might change the equation a little bit. See, we're fighting with the, with the resistance here. Fighting the resistance. Sounds like sounds like a movie. There I mean, it's gonna be a very interesting day, folks. I think I think this is one of the most interesting weeks. We have so many, we have so many things sort of, it's, it's one of those, the more things change, everything stays the same sort of situations, but it's, it's hard to tell because everyone's like, all right, what are we, what are we doing here? Where do I put my money? And no one's doing anything to start the day. And everything looks so different, and they shouldn't. That's what the averages. Here's a good day that averages are gonna. You know how many people are gonna get screwed because they're using an average right now to trade. Which average are you looking at? Are you looking at the Nasdaq average, the S and P average? What are you looking at? So are you selling at a low? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. If we use the average, we're gonna be selling at a low here. Is that what we should be doing? Should we be selling at a low or a high? And should we be buying at a low or be buying at a high here? Well, now all of a sudden you're confused. This is why we don't, we don't make decisions on averages. We make them on margins. and Margins are our individual positions. Definitely a nice day to be patient for those of you that are not in positions or maybe got a little bit beat up this week if you weren't able to take advantage of some of the other moves, which is completely fine. You're definitely going to have a lot of chances coming out of some of these moves. Uh, there's a lot of things coming down into this 2% range, which I like. When we've been having those days where we have that uh, plus 1 to minus 1 range, it's very hard to get into some of those and see them. But if it's coming from minus 2, it's going to be fucking easy. You have all these positions at minus 2 right now. That starts to make a move to the upside. That's an easy weekend trade. Very easy weekend trade. Let's see. You don't see in the middle of nowhere. Hard to tell about that. And use basically the same. Let's see, sale came down off the open. See what we can find on the sell side. Find some candles that look good. We're gonna stick with what we got so far. yeah the the biggest question is just uh for some of these some of the value oriented ideas big name companies what what exactly is what does monday look like if if we could somehow get a short term position that is exposed to that 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 would be pretty wild a risky, a risky trade on on a big value company like something like an energy company, a bank. That's like it'll only be a, it would only be a few percent on the underlying to make quite the percent on those options. We're not talking about a hundred percent. We're talking about much more than that. None of that's being priced in. I just don't know if he can do it. The problem with uh, okay, right, here's the problem with taking a short term risky position on a value trade. Like some of these things that have been value like banks and energy is that it's going to cost a lot more money to go do that. It's going to cost a lot more money to be able to, to get the, the upside you're actually really looking for. 
which means you're already throwing you're throwing more risk with the cost on top of something that's already risky because you have no fucking clue, right? That's where a lot of my hesitation is. I don't I don't see anything that's actual possible. Maybe K on support here. Things on the consumer side should still be going up. Retail stores should still be going up uh, next week. Again, everything is getting hit. Everything is getting hit by the rotation into tech. That does not mean it goes down. So. Files still going. I like that EBR chart. That's cute. Roku, love the candle. Oh, let's go. We get a nice Roku move here going into the weekend. Might be able to play around with this a little bit. That the, those options are gonna be really wacky because this uh, this move here barely budged. These options are gonna be nutty. Be very strange. This might be a a bonk right here at three seventy eight. Take profit and load up, load up on new calls, something like that. I have no idea what's gonna happen with these ones. Those are very strange looking. Let me take a look. Also, seeing this move again, this is very important. If we see moves like this that are completely opposite, or just not opposite, but completely different from the other things in the market, that we understand that there's speculation going on, right? What is the speculation? Well, we've had an opinion over the last few months that there's things going on in this area, right? But then another one, some news on that because of YouTube-related stuff. Yeah, whether, whether or not... Whatever the angle is, there's speculation of things. That's that's the only that's it can be. You know what? We can all have we could all be wrong about what it is, or we could all just think there's something, and we could all have different ideas. All of them are speculation, which will cause spikes, right? This volatility. Uh, and so that's why the options look so freaking weird. I like the move so far. I I just think the options are a little. <laughs> a little strange because we had that day that it came down and the options I were in from the trend line break looked the exact same. So I think the pricing is probably going to jolt me here today. Blink came back down to support. I'm trying to find... I don't even look at that JNUG chart or else you're going to be buying gold. TWLO is great. This is, again, the charts that are coming up into open space. Big fan of this. I'm glad about these ones. Uh, some of these names that just need some help catching back up. All right, we got a doji on the S&P. I don't think anyone wants to do anything here. I think everyone's a little bit worried about the rotation and that they get caught off guard, which is, again, you know what we're getting for a reaction is that people didn't make money on growth. That's what happened. I think more people didn't make money on this trade than people that did. And I think that might be a problem. A, okay, a lot of people made a lot of money on these trades with mega caps specifically. But it, you know what the market looks like today is a bunch of whiny babies. A bunch of whiny babies that did not make money on it. And so now they're sitting and doing nothing because they're not sure they want to buy it now. That's what it looks like. Honestly, what it looks like. Because they're going, ah, oh, shit, I didn't make that money, did I? And you know what's going to happen is they're going to end up buying it. So we're going to stick with growth, obviously. But it, it just it honestly just looks like that people missed out. And when I say people, I mean like institutions, everybody. Everyone was rotating into this like for a month. For a month, we've been rotating into it. But I think, uh, again, everyone's going, oh, fuck, I got to sell my banks, got to sell my energy, make some, and make some moves here. So they're sitting. That's why this is up so much. They're just sitting here. They haven't made the... The flow hasn't happened yet. Even though we have not had correlation here, I think we can see it now. This money has not come into the equity side yet today. I think we can see that. We had direct uh, outflow from value into uh, growth, even though this was spiking up a little bit. Uh, but now we can see that a lot of this is not pulling back yet because it's not re-entering equity market yet.
Where is Europe at? Let's see. Europe's selling more. I think this is good for us, to be honest with you. I think this money is going to want to... They've been trading at all-time highs for so long. <laughs> uh, they're probably going to want to throw some risk on into us, so I think we're going to get flows. I mean, I, I think Europe is great. I think there's no reason to stop trading the value trade at all. I don't... Again, this is half the problem, I think, is that uh, people just look at the new shiny thing and they want to go get the shiny thing, which is tech all the time. I don't think it's necessary. And I think it, I, I think Europe hurts itself every single time this happens because Europe should technically have a larger market. Should technically have a large market, whether it's, whether it's more, uh, volume heavy or not, or excuse me, more, um, you know, cap size heavy or not, you know, it's not going to have bigger companies than Apple, shit like that. That's not going to happen, but they should be more active. That That's that's the problem. You can have companies that are smaller, but you can be active in your market. Instead, they throw demand this way. That's, yeah. You have a London trading office that trades primarily U.S. equities. Like, that's, I mean, it doesn't have to be like that. And you generate, you generate, revenue and increase increase things in your own country by trading in the country uh, and trading your own things important it's like thinking how how silly how silly of a chart volkswagen is and it's like that is the largest automobile company yet here we are Worth pennies. So, um, let's see. Energy, energy, energy. They've been getting cucked for the last few years. True. Uh, but even if you just go back in time, it's that should have been the largest company, right? In terms of valuation, but since it doesn't trade on U.S. stock exchanges, uh, it's not, <laughs> and that's why they've been getting. Yeah, or maybe that's what you meant. That's why they're getting cocked. Yes, that I I think I think it's gonna change. I think Europe will be the one of the the larger markets. I think I think what happened with retail trading here from 2020 into now has uh has really changed things because I know that a lot of retail traders really picked up over in Europe, just like we had here, right? And that's what you need to get that market going. Which, if you look at that chart, that that just nonstop rally through all-time highs or like the trend through all-time highs was exactly like our value charts, which is why I kept saying Europe is just a value. It's just value. That's all they have. They don't have the tech angle. Uh, but those were great. It just kept going up. You don't have to do anything, but then you don't have volatility and you can't get active and you go to that very slow trading. You, you need it. You need opportunities. Hard to go buy something that just keeps going in a straight line. Hmm. Not much yet. Not much yet. Looks like we're going to be careful with X again, tied to the commodities angle. Uh, if this breaks the support, then I'm not going to be doing it for a weekend trade. Again, anything tied to uh, commodities, we don't actually want to be a part of because that's what's being sold right now. Uh, as I said, X is per completely uh, a technical trade. So if it's breaking the technical here of uh, having support to buy on, then this is not the trade. So just keep that in mind. Because it's got a negative to it, but if it's if it's got support, then perfect, we'll take it. But right now it's not, so that is not the trade. We're gonna have a lot of nice, so we're gonna have a lot of nice pullbacks to buy on. So that's the one, again, we should not look at red days as bad things, so we're not going to. Red days allow us to go have a pullback to buy on. It's what we buy on pullbacks that matters. We're not gonna buy things that were already going down. We're going to buy things that have been going up for a while that now just pulled back from their high. 
that's the shit we're going to buy, right? And so that's what we'll be looking for going into the weekend here. Getting closer to close, we'll buy stuff. And then on Monday, starting a new week, we're going to be looking for lows to buy on, right? But we're not buying things that have not been bullish. We're buying bullish charts only. So again, the S&P, we look at the S&P. Is the S&P bullish? I'm just going to use this as an average. S&P has been bullish, trending all time high. This is a great pullback to buy on. That's a great pullback to buy on. That's the kind of thing we're buying. We're not buying something that's been trending down for months that continued to go down today and this week, right? The great pullback. I mean, whether you want to, I don't think anyone here is going, well, let me go buy spy options. I mean, you can, but that's like, yes, you could go buy spy options right now and you'll make money on Monday. I would guarantee it. I would guarantee it. Uh, but you'd go trade the individual companies and you're going to make more money. So again, the, this is like, <laughs> you have better chances because your upside is better. You, you're risking less by putting it onto one company. If you put it onto multiple individual companies, right? It kind of creates an average, but instead of having one position, you have five. And that's, now you have to lose five times instead of one time, right? Which protects your downside, which is why we do that. So uh, and again, it increases your upside because it's riskier already. You get you get paid for your risk on an option, right? That's the whole point. That's literally what the price is, is the risk. So you already know the price of the risk because that's your premium. Z still hasn't gone anywhere yet, so keeping that in mind. Uh, I, I, I do think we're going to go all... I, I think this goes all-time high today. This is going to go. It's the, the market's doing nothing that it's going to end up doing something. This is how volatility has always worked. We talk about it. I mean, yes, spot fix is up, but it's just reacting to S&P. Uh, again, very important to understand that this is just the S&P, right? This is literally just the S&P inverted. That's it. So this is not the overall market. I would say mega caps are going to go through highs right now today. Again. NASDAQ will be all-time high today. That's what I would say. Quote me. And we're all we're in these positions, so we don't have to do anything. Don't have to do anything. In terms of spy, I don't know. I literally don't know. Energy. Are we going to do it? Don't know. More important that we just look and understand what's happening. Um, it's all been pre-market so far, so there's been no action today. It's so it's got people are buying it. It's up from its open. It's being bought, so there are people buying. We'll see. The Fox chart up as well. Okay, so we've got two things in the sector. The M&A, we believe, sector. Roku and Fox. Looks like Fox is... Uh, Fox... Uh, Fox is doing a pullback into support here. It looks like it already did it. So it looks like it's bouncing on it, going to the upside. This chart has not moved from this range, by the way, which is uh, when I posted this chart, I was like, I don't really know if this is good because it's been sitting in the same spot forever. But this kind of idea of possibly bid here, at least green with what we see. T breaking down. See you later. Didn't even know you. Uh, this has come and gone, obviously. T is back to sucking. Uh, sorry, T lovers out there. Uh, you'll still get your dividend. In terms of the average, the dividend charts are still good. <laughs> Just uh, T is a little beat up here. And has been, right? Has been. What the Dow looks like, right? That's what the Dow looks like. When you're all banks and energy, you look like banks and energy. Right there. See ya. This is going to probably get back to the trend line. 
it's today again it depends on if we see the move today that's only it's only half a percent on monday 60 base points it's going to get back in the channel we'll get going again big big names will be on the board all next week but not today we are tech 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 Well, definitely a red day so far. Definitely a red day so far. Big red day so far. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, the other thing we need to, even though we've had so many things going on, we need to be continue to be aware that we've got policy decisions being sort of debated right now. Timeline's important to us. So everything we've seen can completely, again, think about the whiplashes we're getting here. Uh, we've got the problem of we just sold some value, and then you know what's going to happen? We're going to get infrastructure bills getting passed, and it's going to cause that shit to go back up, right? So we need to be very careful, again, of what's going on. Um, and then the other, the other still, th the thing that needs to be on our mind is, again, retail, retail traders. Uh, these meme stocks, we know they're not going to last in the long term in terms of their value, but we see that they're in the short term, they continue to hold their value, right? That's going to go away, right? We, we've seen that it's got stronger, sort of a stronger hold this time around, but it's going to go away. It's going to go away. And so, again, it's really important that we understand that. Uh, when we when we compare these things, they're not the same, right? The the mega caps going up, and at the same time, that AMC goes up is a different thing. When I don't know, but I'm not trading it. Like when does this come back down to to ten dollars? I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to eventually. <laughs> so that could have an impact. RNG is doing well. Amazon half a percent now on the day. Again, you just sit in mega caps, you're doing well. Doing well. Oh, what a gross looking Q chart. All right. Well, we don't have much, guys. Not much. Doing well in, a, in enough places that things are not looking bad. Mega caps holding the torch. And then we have our other risk. Risk position is doing pretty well on the growth side as well. What I want to be is nimble. I want to be able to get in and out of my positions quickly. 
think I'm going to think about that a little bit more. Again, as we've sort of rotated now back to growth, I want to be able to have a portfolio that is revolving, like I always talk about, but that is also reactive. I can get I can get in and out quickly, uh, which again is our benefit. But when we think about things like the portfolio we've had, which has been more long-term, if let's say I wanted to liquidate everything, you know, a portfolio like that, that's got longer term positions in it, it's going to take a little bit more time and you're going to get it, you're going to get hurt in terms of the way you're taking profit on it. I want something that is nimble. Not like that. You can make decisions quickly. I want to be reactionary, right? I want to be very reactionary. Which is again what short-term risk positions kind of let you do. They, they inherently are like that because they they have uh, they've got timelines. They're and you're constantly putting the best position on. That's kind of what I. That's my favorite thing about strategy I use is that every time you put you're you're constantly having to put new trades on, and so you're always finding the best trade at that moment, which is different than just sitting in something for a long period of time. You don't have to ask every day. Because you're making money every day, or you're at least you're trending up, otherwise you wouldn't be in the position. But you're not really asking yourself, what can I do better? Right. Today, we we need to we need to learn more from today so far. We need to learn more from today. So I'm gonna be gonna be watching. Again, Nasdaq Nasdaq should go to all time high. I don't think that's really a hot take, so <laughs> I don't think anyone really cares about that. So in terms of anything else though. Alright, let me grab some water, guys. Hold on.
Alrighty, we're fueled up. We are fueled up. The water. Ate a couple coffee beans. You know how it is, guys. We no longer take the time to go make coffee or buy coffee. We just eat coffee. Throw a couple beans in, you're good. All right, what do we got? We've got some... Let's see. This is... We don't really have much. We're being aware. We want to we wanna digest some things as well. Uh, we, we, like, we like where things are. Let's uh, take a look at some other things. Bitcoin's at under 37,000 now. Yields are... Okay, we found some money. 10 years going... Uh, yields are going down, down 3% at 1.46. Uh, that's some money right there being put into bonds. So we're buying the 10-year, but we're selling the short term, which again is a, a, a Fed reactionary. So selling two-year to go into 10 makes sense in terms of how you're going into growth. How do you hedge your growth positions? Well, you just sold value. So now you need to put your hedge into into what? Into bonds, which is supposed to be the correlation. So Again, we have had no correlation in the bond market. That's uh, a pretty nice day so far in terms of what we've seen. You're hedging your growth with bonds now. Nice. Perfect. That's the first time in a long time we've seen some hedging with bonds. So uh, we can say that for sure. Crude's still going up. <laughs> we're almost at 72 for a barrel. Uh, we're going to be putting energy on, boys. If you don't think we're not going to put energy on when crude's going to 72 here, uh, yeah, that's that. In terms of metals, gold down, silver up, doesn't help. Commodities are a mixed bag. So again, we're not going to rely on commodities. Europe, we're closing in an hour, down about 2%. Maybe we'll use some of what happens there to understand what our timing is on energy, banks. All right, let's take a look at some ideas. What do people have? We got add tweets to your chart. No, thank you. App root. What's that? Not sure. Crypto ideas. Okay, nothing interesting. Forex. Interesting stock ideas. All right. Spy at critical risk off Gamma Zone. Okay. We've been talking about Gamma. That causes volatility up or down. What do we got? Oh boy. Uh oh, we got the perma bear. He's the hedge of the world, is his name. He's telling us about how the gamma is going to lead us to a, a full blown correction. And he says, it's about time. He is, you know what? You know what hedge of the world is sick of? Is equity prices going up. Because who wants their portfolio to go up? We want it to go down. It's about time to go down. So you imagine if perma bears just understood that they could just put their money into stocks in the long, like in, on the long side, the bullish side, 99% of the time they'd make money. Damn. Well, let's see. How long has Hedge of the World been losing money? Well, we've talked about how the S&P has not gone down more than 5% in seven months. Last time that's happened was seven months ago. Uh, so for at least seven months, he's been losing. And then also seven months before that, it was going up uh, from the COVID bottom. And for 12 years before COVID happened, it was going up. Best of luck to head of the world. What is this? Huge correction coming. This guy figured out how the monthly chart works. And he drew a line through it and put a big arrow that says, what is this? 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 Hmm. Really makes you wonder. If you see the chart with the candlesticks. <laughs> you just figured out what candlesticks are. 
If you see the chart with the candlesticks on monthly, it has been such a bull run. It is going to stop at some time. And when it does, it will be big. So everyone that is bullish about the markets in the upcoming months is completely wrong in, in bold capital letters and exclamation points. You're completely wrong. The money you've been making is fake. Just short spy and leave it there until the correction and you are set. Oh God, look at this one. Also, if you want to take a look at the fundamentals, the National Hurricane Center is expecting three to five major hurricanes this year, which will surely damage the markets even more. Holy fuck, guys. I'll tell you what, there are some retail traders out there that are special. Who looks at a trend like this to the upside and says that's bad? You know what trends are? Those go with the trend. <laughs> this is insane. I mean, yeah, it's completely opposite. People do this, though. It's like, if everyone's doing one thing, I have to do the opposite. It's like, if... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you show them something that's been happening forever, and then they go, no, that's going to stop happening. And guess what? Hurricanes are going to shut the market down. When's the last time hurricanes... Uh, yeah, yikes. Next. Next, next, next. Fuck. People are insane. <laughs> when I think about the competition, ugh, sometimes. All right, there's not really actually anything. All right. Back to watching the NASDAQ go to all time high. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. We've been we've been making money for years trading long. Where have you been? Why have you been shorting so much? You're so angry. I can tell by those the the way they type that they're so angry. They're just like mad at the world because they're perma bears. You wouldn't be mad at the world if you stopped shorting the market every day. <laughs> and then it's when they finally get it and they're like, "Yes, I was right." And it's like, "No, you do that every day." And then finally it goes down and you go, yes, I've only lost 90%. Uh, too much. Just too much. Feel bad. It's like being a drug addict, but in like a can't afford it way. Not really strange, but <laughs> yeah, literally. You're addicted. I think I was trying to make the... It's not an addiction if you can afford it meme. And perma bears definitely cannot afford to be perma bears forever. When a perma bear goes bankrupt, another perma bear takes his place. That's how it works. Okay, Fox has continued. That was a pretty good look. Uh, pretty good look. It's coming up to 38 now at the resistance. This is up 2% today. Roku's up 4. I don't know if we, again, this this sector, this entire sort of area of what we've been talking about, this media connection. We have charts coming up today. I don't think those two have anything connected, but uh, it is notable that they are very, very similar. Now, Roku has been putting moves on. Fox has been, like I showed you, in that range. That These are two completely different looking charts that look the exact same today. So, uh, as silly as it may sound, we need to take it into consideration that these two are being bought in the exact same way right now, which they look the exact same, so they're traded the same way. That means speculation is being put on both of these charts in the exact same way today. Now, the sizing is a little different, but Fox is 21 and a half. Roku is 48. I would have thought it would have been the other way around in terms of market caps, but a uh, little bit more bid on Roku, yet it looks the same. So 
Very interesting. Very interesting. I think uh, these are these are very nice charts. I'm glad I mentioned it when it was coming on the support there, because uh, it was kind of it was very wonky to look at. But okay, hope to see if we have some other some other medias type of things that put some points on. This is a lot of that's a lot of points. So. Some of the Chinese stickers pulled back from the opening bid. It it does look like a lot of people had the same sort of idea. And now I think what's happening here is that it slowed down just like I've slowed down my thinking so far today. I think a lot of us are now watching and we're wondering uh, what exactly our timing is because we're all doing the same thing and we're all sort of feedback looping it into not doing anything. So uh, it look kind of looks like everyone's just sitting here waiting. Uh, so the Chinese stickers did pull back. It doesn't need to look like the rest of the market, right? It should not it should look like China. So uh, we'll see what what goes on in here. But I'm already I'm already a part of these positions, so we'll we'll see how these go. We're up. We're still up. Uh, we were up a little over a percent, two percent or so on some, and now we're about sixty basis points. Let's see, healthcare should do well into the weekend. Position for that. We get kind of bonked yesterday. A little bit of a bonk. Anthem came down a percent and a half. Some of these are U and for instance, come down as well two percent. In terms of these, um, these are such long term positions that it doesn't matter really. In terms of the one daily, uh, it is significant and that is not connected. It was gapped. In terms of in terms of the the script of it, I don't think it changes. Uh, we've been we obviously were a part of it for a long time. We understood the consolidation was coming, and then the question was, when does the consolidation break out? We started taking uh, positions here uh, at the low, uh, and it held the support until this candle today. And so, in terms of these, I'm just watching. They're not they're not moving. They're not changing because they're long term. So we'll see how these how these change and. The pharmaceutical bioangle has just continued to be bullish. It's going through a little bit of a short-term console, but that's mostly bullish. So we'll see how these things sort of come come together. Again, things do not continue going straight up for fucking ever. So we we know how consolidations work, and that's what we want. We want healthy price movement, so we can take the breaks. All right, it does look like we're picking up now. It does look like we're picking up, getting things going. Uh, these charts, again, that look like this, we had we were looking at uh, TWLO as well, that looks like this, that are coming out of a range, have, have this sort of look. Got open space. Open space. Also for the travel trade into the weekend, we did get the news for the EU opening up for the US. So uh travel's kind of on for that. I don't know how much like we really care about that as a uh as like some sort of news factor that helps out on some macroeconomic front. I don't we already have priced that things are opening up, so I don't know how much that matters, but it is at the same time, so 
Definitely not bad news. I don't think people, I don't think bond traders have any clue what they're doing or what's going to happen. <laughs> bond traders are getting whipped back and forth because they're like, all right, nobody wants to buy our bonds. They just want to buy equities. And we got the Fed doing God knows what. Do we lock, what do we want to do? We want to lock in rates here. This is such a split. You get, you get 10 year losing yield. Two year gain in yield, uh, two days in a row now. Maybe we should look at some of these charts. Let's take a look. All right, here is what we got. Here's your FOMC. Swing up, swing down. We had the rise in yields with the value trade. Uh, when it got its beginnings. Let's compare to US to year. Why does it always do this on trading view? There it is. All right, can we line this up so we can see it? All right, here's your two year. <laughs> here's your two year, which I have, as I have said, is the, it's not written in stone or something, but the two year is what the bond, uh, is what the Fed is most sensitive to, right? So isn't it funny that our little bond trading friends have said, oh yeah, Fed? And continued, continued to sell, continued to sell their two years. <laughs> but, oh yeah, Fed? Well, why don't you come buy my two years for me? You want to stop? You want to taper? You don't want to buy bonds anymore? Well, guess what? You're going to have to come buy my two-year bonds. That's what this looks like. Because everything else is the same besides us and so in terms of what this means um again the crybaby angle absolutely uh bond mark i mean bond traders have had every right to complain because kind of hard when the fed just is dumping on you every day <laughs> and you just have to buy it and then no one wants to buy it from you so i mean i get it but it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Uh, and this is not as extreme as it seems. Uh, the percent gain. Uh, that is, it's, it's not as extreme as it seems. Um, but again, if you just compare to where we were, right? It's not even, <laughs> look at the two-year, right? It's not even close. So just think about where the, how the 10-year came up and now how the two-year is moving. Uh, it, it's actually, it, it doesn't, it's actually not what it looks like right now. Because uh, again, the ten year is the the most in demand, and so on. you can tell two year no one did anything, and as I said, now we have the two year moving as soon as the Fed did something different again, cry babies, but uh, it is interesting and something to think about that bond market has no clue what's going to go on in the future, so <laughs> they have no clue, no clue. Uh, and the thing, the biggest thing is again, it's not so much what is the Fed going to do, it's I mean, which it's the biggest part of it. Uh, but what the thing is, is that no one wants to specifically come buy bonds still, right? And now we have this weird hedging that's going on for growth because that's what you're technically supposed to do. Uh, and so there's just so many different things going on that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot.
Let's compare the two year with the dollar. Can we get a can we get a thing here? Let's There you go. Isn't that funny? Huh? I put on a new pane over here. So it's not percent. But isn't that funny? If this is all, if this is all cash from fucking selling two years, okay, let's put it like this. The dollar has not been correlated to any of our other markets in terms of flows for a while. This was risk on equities when the dollar was going up, which doesn't make sense because, uh, again, if the dollar's going up, then that, it doesn't really make sense that it's being spent, right? That doesn't really... I mean, there's a couple ways you could look at it, sure, but it's kind of contrary to what we, we think about in terms of the natural way of things. And so we don't really think it's money from equities that fills the dollar right now. This is not going up because equities are selling or something. There's not any. There's no outflow from equities right now. You can go look right now. There's no equities uh, outflowing. Like I've showed, uh, the last five quarters have inflowed $1 trillion into the U.S. equity market which is more than the last 10 years combined, right? We're not outflowing. That's for damn sure. So this is not money from the equity market. So where's it from? Well, we always talk about the relationship between the dollar and bonds. We know bond market is sort of the, the one in which this happens. Well, what bonds? Well, it's not the 10-year because the 10-year has been going to a low. Oh, somebody just honked. It's the two-year, which is what the Fed is the most sensitive to. But we have not seen this so much in the past, but uh, uh, well, now we know, I think we know what the money is. I don't think this is so much money from, it doesn't line up with China, it doesn't line up with Europe. So strange. Well, we know who owns it, at least. Bond traders that are selling two-year, or that are trading two-year. What are two-year... What is money? Okay, ready? So, that money was in the two-year. If you're trading two years, right? And now you don't want your two years, where do you put your money? So you just sold a two-year bond. You were trying to get a, you were trying to lock in a rate for two years, right? You're gonna get paid back that money in two years. That's what. That's short term. So that money that's being sold in the two-year bond right now wants to find a new home. Is it gonna find a long-term home? Well, that's opposite to what it was doing before. It needs to find it somewhere else. Where is two-year yield? money going to go find a home in a different market than the bond market for short term the u.s growth market <laughs> gonna find it over here isn't it isn't that kind of being in relation to this here kind of in relation how it's just now breaking out remember how we saw that two year has been at zero basically uh, for a long time until just now, till this recent breakout here of growth. Yeah, kind of similar, isn't it? Kind of similar. And then the 10 year lined up with value. Hmm. Hmm. And then the dollar's going up when the two year's being sold. Hmm. Remember when the 10 year was being sold and the dollar wasn't going up? Huh. Makes you wonder. Really makes you wonder.
now I mean they could put it in I don't know. They could, I don't know. They could put it into gold, I guess. Maybe Bitcoin. Maybe they'll put it into Bitcoin. All right. On to Z. Z is now coming off of the support after a bounce. We came through. It's hard to tell. I'm not sure what you guys think. It's hard to tell. We'll put it on the 15. The 5 is not good. 15 shows us price goes bid through 116.5. Price pulls back and is now bouncing. It kind of came down a little bit further, but I think you can put a little bit of error in there. Looks like it's bouncing if it claims this this high. on the. So we're going to get a third candle here. If it claims the high, uh, then you're good. I would say if this bounces right here with the next candle, then I'm going to take that trade. Again, looking for July monthlies, most likely. Right around here, right around here. I think it's I think it's decent enough for now. I mean, it's probably gonna get it, it might get banged up at lunch, so it may have to be re entered. But uh, again, we sell things as soon as they're not in the profit, so that's how that works. Let's see. I mean, it looks like a lot of people are buying. No, oh, hold on. No, there's not a lot of people buying. It's not that much. Some of them are up quite a bit. 130s are up almost. They're up 70%. 120s are up about 45 to 50. Um, 120s is what I would buy. It, now we ticked down though, so now we gotta be. Now we have to watch. May not be actually bouncing. May be a rejection. That's what we have to watch. Might be. Might be the other way. One twenty is three percent, so I'd be buying one twenty July. So, uh, but this is not. It's not showing us. It, and I think that's what the five minute was showing us was that this actually came down. But again, it's hard to tell based on it. it just I mean, look at it. It's a smorgasbord of sitting on this line. Might be a rejection, so keep that in mind. We will not buy it unless it's above because you're just going to keep getting bonked. We have a lot of things that are probably going to bonk today. MNSO comes up to resistance. Looks like it's getting bonked down. Roku is heading up. So again, I, I love this move today. I think it's great. Uh, completely doing its own thing, which is what Roku usually does. That comes in at 378.75. That's pretty close. Looks like we're probably doing it. Uh, we've done it in the past. We come up into here, we get rejected. So again, transition uh, is on. But again, we've had times like this where you you keep going. And that's what the plan is. We get this as a weekly chart. Again, let me just show it. This is a weekly chart right here. We got it on the trend line. So that's a great start. That's a break. That's a continue. Throw the trend line in there. That's what we got. So Z, we're keeping an eye on, but we got the ready. Let's see. A lot of, I mean, a lot of things look good. It's just everything looks bad overall. Or not bad, but basically everything is down overall we have some positions that are good but we don't so much care about that we know that things are different netflix doing it for us here whoo baby there you go boys there you go net uh nasdaq i already told you is going all time high today going all time high there you go you get netflix coming off this again the swing of swing trades how many times have we swung this quite a bit it's to a low swing it Gets to a low, swing it. 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 Gets to a low. Ten percent range. Name recognition. 
AMD now possibly, possibly going to come through. If Okay, here's one thing as well. If NASDAQ goes to the, through the high again, you're going to all of a sudden remove that veil of supply. And all of a sudden, again, the script changes because now what's happening? Well, no longer is it that the market's down. It's that the NASDAQ's going through all-time high. So which is it? Is it record highs or is it we're fucking getting destroyed, right? These things do not work. You can't put these things together. And the S&P is too tech heavy to go and sit here and say that the Nasdaq's all time high, but the S&P's bad. These those things don't make sense. And uh, again, the, we're not going to be that. We're not going to be looking at things like that. That's for sure. Yeah, we got travel on supports. Those are weekend trades. Those are dealer's choice. We'll talk about blue chips next week. How to buy those on the low. Obviously, this week has not been the week for them. Looking for more uh, things that are on the sell side here. Going towards lunch for some melt. Not, not like a chicken melt or a tuna melt or anything like that, even though that sounds pretty good. Uh, but... Some melt ups. Nothing really. A lot of things. A lot of these things are just kind of. Uh, they're they've been on a downtrend for a week or week and a half. Uh, and again, I do not want to be buying things that are on a downtrend for a week, week and a half. If it hasn't been bullish before, if it's if it's something like a here you go, something like a Ford chart. This is completely different here, right? Now again, these blue chip kind of names. I'm not sure if I want to buy these today still. So I think these are more Monday. Uh, maybe Ford is a little different. I'm thinking about it. I think this might be a weekend trade. Uh, but most of these blue chip things like your GEs, BAs, I'm not sure this is like today you want to buy it. I think you, we don't have enough information to understand so much what people want to do because I don't even understand what I want to do. So I don't think we have enough of a grasp yet to confidently do something again, to throw, it's one thing to go, uh, you know, cast a wide net and to try to capture things. It's another thing to actually put money behind something confidently. And I don't want to put my money on something unless I'm confident about it. Like, I'm not going to tell you guys that I believe in something if I don't fucking believe in it. So again, it's always, it should always be like that with all of us. Right. So for at least today, some of these are just, it's not that I'm worried about them. It's just that I can't confidently sit here and say, I'm going to go put fucking 10 grand on something and feel good about it. That's not, that, that does not feel good. Maybe forward here. I kind of like this chart. So again, EV angle, growth angle. It, then it has the benefit of the value angle. So that's why this chart's been so good. We've been looking for when do we re-enter. Tried the trend line. Didn't happen. Now we're looking. This could be, could be the spot. I don't... I put this line in here at 1430, if you remember. This is from, this is from 2015 and before that this is an actual level it's pretty strong and we're basically there so this chart's a little different because we have some real long-term support here hmm. been looking at it the options are kind of hanging out let's let's put it on intraday and think about it a little bit here We've been pulling back, which probably has has given us a. If you think about it, we're we've been discounting, discounting, discounting options, but now we've been coming into a low that you start to build up. You still you start to build up quantity of options once you get to a low enough point, right? Price goes down enough, demand is gonna it's gonna really start to peak, uh, start to pick up. Let's do some analysis on these options here. Ford is pretty heavy, so. It's just the the way the price I've talked about this before, the way the prices work, you've got sort of inexpensive options. July monthlies, I mean, 15 is going for half a cent. I mean, a half a dollar, 50 cents. Um, those are loaded, by the way. You get so here you go. Here's a good example of volatility being priced a little bit better. Ford Julys are all at the money right now, 42% IV. 
That's not that's not under 30. That's not that 20% that we saw in some charts. So you get the volatility priced in a little bit. So that does sort of decrease the my will to buy this right now is that you're at you're at a high IV already. Um let's see. But it's 50 cents. It's down relative to di to today's underlying. So IVs have not moved too much. I th there's 40 There's not that much volume. Okay, so in terms of the ratio between volume and OI, you've got a few thousand at 15 here. A few thousand volume, a little over 3000. And then you've got an OI of 45,000. So the ratio is not so volume heavy here that I'm worried about some new entries here. So I, we could be pre preempting other people buying here. The question is, do people want to buy this today? It might be a little too ahead. This might be more Monday that people would finally get it. So what is our chances that we open lower? We have support. The worst, the sort of your risk here is that you open... You would open, it's it's like a percent and a half is your risk. That's a little bit better than some other positions that we've looked at. Some of our other positions were like two and a half. If we look at banks, our risk with banks is 2%. So the forward's a little bit better, but I, fuck. Do we take these trades going into launch? Do we wait? The options don't tell us that people are are so much getting excited right now. So we have time to make a decision. We're not going to lose anything. Like if the underlying goes up like half a percent here on some of these charts, we're not going to really lose anything on the option side. We should be able to be okay. So we have a little bit of time to think about this. I'm going to fucking convince myself to buy everything, which is probably not the best thing, but... Um, bum, 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 bum. I don't, I just don't know if it's a close trade or a right now trade. Okay, I'm gonna start to do it. I'm gonna just at least start to do it and then build the pieces, build the pieces up. Oh, give me a little bit. XLE, XLF, so banks, energy, putting forward in there as well. If we can get enough points here at lunch, we get enough points here at lunch to increase our baseline. If we at least get a percent, that will protect us over the weekend because we're we're looking to risk about 2%. If we get a percent right now, then we don't need to worry about risking 2% because we'll already have a percent on and people aren't betting on this right now. So we should be able to gain about 10% on options if we're going July monthly. We'll be able to get about 10% per 1% for the exponential. And then that will carry over the weekend because we're putting more risk on. And so if we do open a percent lower, a 2% lower, we should be at break even. We should be okay. So uh, unless we get stopped out here immediately, which then means we have to do it again. So <laughs> fuck, I mean, it doesn't matter. The, the worst case scenario is you get stopped out today, which is fine. We'll put a new position on if we want to. So uh, we're going to go with that. That's what we're doing. So... This is going to be quick as it's going to be easily, easily filled. Uh, so if you guys are looking at that, again, this is not as important as the other positions, but I, I don't think we can ignore, ignore things. And the, what it looks like is no one's, when I see such low volume on options, but then high OIs, I'm like, okay, people are not selling. People are not selling and you're not getting a good enough price. So it means that the prices have, have basically come to an equilibrium, which is sort of what we look for. Um, but it's at such a point that the underlying here is, uh, should benefit us quite a bit. We should be getting a benefit here uh, to at least put a baseline, which I talk about a lot, is you want to increase your baseline going into a weekend risk trade. You don't want to wait till the last minute to put it on. Sometimes you do. But if you can put you know 10% on your options before the weekend, you're going to feel a hell of a lot better instead of going in zero, like butt naked, right? Who wants to walk into a room naked, right?
Doesn't make sense. XOM, CBX, those are what we got. Those look good. Uh, the Ford thing, uh, we'll see. We'll see. You know, like it. Oh, Bank of America, GS. What you got? Uh, I don't know about JP Morgan. I mean, you guys put JP Morgan if you want, but it's a little too slow for me. It's They're all the same. They're all the same. But Okay, Roku taking some profit. CZ still on the still on the level. Right, all right, all right. A lot of fun. So much different things. A lot of possibilities. Mega caps were doing well. Doing well. Got some take profit coming through here, but too worried about the volatility coming into lower volume lunch. Let's see, did Facebook and Google start to turn a little bit? Let's see. Basically my bet is, is that these are gonna turn. That's why we're not, that's why we're not higher right now, right? Betting that they'll turn, maybe not. Lunch is definitely gonna be a little sporadic. So I think at this point it's, we're past 11. It's, we're gonna really, it's going to be until close, so we're not going to see anything accurate, I don't think. I don't think everyone was already asleep at the wheel at the open. So, highly, unless all of a sudden people just did what I did, I highly doubt we get anything good during lunch. So, in terms of, like, uh, accuracy, we could melt up, melt down, but I don't think it's accurate until we see the close. So, uh, again, if we get a big meltdown or a big melt up, neither of those are accurate. So... Or swing, swing back and forth, whatever we got. We are definitely not on a volume that's accurate. Um. Okay. I I don't know. I I think I don't know if I can get GE here. I think BA is on support that could be bought. You know, if I think some of these can, everything can kind of be bought on the the value side. So. If it's on a support, this GE chart is kind of hard. It's in a weird spot. I think I'm just going to kind of feel out today. I'm going to buy everything and feel it out. And then if by the end of the day I don't feel comfortable putting it over the weekend, then I'll take profit on it. Or if I already get stopped out before there. I think that's what I'm going to do. I, I think uh, we're at a spot where we can. no one's doing anything. Look at the S&P. It's bouncing on support. Buy support. Buy support right now on everything. And then if come the end of the day, we don't feel good about it, we'll, we'll get out of it, right? And you'll get stopped out immediately if we're going to melt down at lunch anyway. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. There's enough, there's enough liquidity, I think, to, to fill any sort, of, any sort of problem. So we're going to just buy everything on support and go with it. The BHR was cool, like that. You know, you want your SPY 420s. Hey, listen, guys. You want to buy SPY 420s for the meme? There's no problem with that. Go buy SPY 420s. You're going to do fine. That's 1%. Oops. That's 1%. You're going to do fine. You don't want to buy specific things? SPY 420s are great. It's 1% out of the money. Go buy July. July monthly 420s. There you go. I'm doing a variation of that. I'm just buying all the things that are within that average, but specific companies. E real easy way to do it is just go to buy SPY 420s right now. 1% out of the money, a monthly. You get exposure to short-term volatility that comes through right now. Probably make 100%. All right. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to let us leave on a break because I'm going to get a little active right here. I put most of these positions in, but I can already tell some of this shit's looking a little wonky. Uh, I'm going to do some like, active trading here. Uh, I'm Basically, what I want is like what I said. I want to... We've got the idea of growth. We already have those positions doing great. The rest of the port right now, 
I want to try to get some points here during the day so I can push them over the weekend and not feel like shit. So I want to be comfortable, have some confident trades. If they're not confident, they don't make me feel uh, like they're worth it, then I'll take them off before the end of the day, most likely for profit if I don't get stopped out. So I'm going to do that now. Let's get some... Uh, Let's get some activity going. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a break. I will see you guys this afternoon. Uh, you know, drink some water, get some exercise, or just trade with me. We'll get some activity going. I will see you guys then. Enjoy. <laughs> 